News 46 is brought to you in part by... Join the Prompt Nugget in May for week after week of fun drawings and giveaways prepared especially for you. Let's start with winning an ATV, being given away every Saturday night. Or perhaps you'd prefer a utility vehicle. Drawing held Monday, May 30th. Earn up to 10 times extra points every Tuesday and Thursday for these drawings with our mystery point multiplier. How's $150 in free slot play sound? Nine winners weekly. Start Mother's Day off with a beautiful Mother's Day brunch in our steakhouse. All this and so much more where the fun never stops for a Nugget Hotel and Casino. News 46 is brought to you by... by Southwest Medical Associates. Look for news about their latest healthcare center opening soon in your neighborhood. Southwest Medical Associates, now that's powerful medicine. News 46 is also brought to you by Affiliated Chiropractic and Affiliated Physical Therapy. Come in for your free consultation. Call 775-727-8900. Our goal is to create the individual treatment plan that will restore your health and end pain. News 46 is also brought to you by Senior Dimensions is a Medicare Advantage plan with 25 years of experience in Nevada. Visit SeniorDimensions.com today and find out more. Tonight on News 46, Rosemary Clark Middle School plays host to an American Idol favorite. The countdown to the 6th High Desert Shorts International Film Festival. And Pahrump Valley High School teens enjoy prom night. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46 with Rick Vale and Rhonda Van Winkle. Local coverage from Deanna O'Donnell and news across Nevada with Janet Eric. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening, it's Tuesday, May 17th, 2011. I'm Rick Vale. And I'm Rhonda Van Winkle for News 46. Tonight we have a couple of updates concerning some continuing stories we've covered here. On May 1st, two victims were attacked at home on Donner Street. One man died as, as a result of being stabbed multiple times. The other, a female, was transported via Mercy Air to UMC Trauma Center in extremely critical condition. Five suspects were arrested in criminal court Judge Tina Brisbell has set their bail. In the case of the double stabbing, which resulted in the murder of one person, 56-year-old Michael Frasher, and the other attempted murder on 21-year-old Antoinette Bell, who is still hospitalized from stab wounds she received on May 1st on Donner Street. Judge Tina Brisbell has set bail for 28-year-old Tiffany Rubio, 38-year-old Victoria Garcia, and 34-year-old Michael Maxwell at $20,000. 38-year-old Troy Jackson and 22-year-old Charles Eubanks are being held without bail. Both victims were stabbed more than a dozen times. The reason behind the stabbings are still not known at this time. However, the Nye County Sheriff's Department have stated that the suspects were under the influence of methamphetamine at the time of their arrest. The preliminary hearing is set for June 3rd at 10 a.m. This is Deanne O'Donnell for News 46. And on April 22nd, Nevada Highway Patrol Trooper Pat Walker investigated a vehicle accident involving a small elk, which was hit at the top of Mount Potassi. The elk was first hit by a truck when a second car dragged the body of the animal down the hill and all the way throughout the town of Pahrump. Mm. Trooper Walker followed the blood and carcass trail to a home on Stardust. The vehicle was not located. They did, however, find the elk's body on Stardust in the bushes. The vehicle was located a short time later, abandoned at the Pahrump Nugget. Upon further investigation, it was discovered that, in fact, the vehicle was reported stolen. Nevada Highway, Patrol, uh, Nevada Highway Patrol took possession of the vehicle and returned it to its owner, a rental car company in Las Vegas. According to the Nye County Sheriff's Department, they stated that two suspects were arrested at the location on Stardust that evening. The Nye County Sheriff's Office now has an update for us. One suspect, Brandon Carter, was arrested at the location on Stardust on April 22nd. The female suspect, Courtney Johnson, was not arrested on scene. Nye County Sheriff's deputies could not find a suitable location for her children to be placed that evening. Child Protective Services were contacted but had no one available to take custody of the children. According to the Nye County Sheriff, Courtney Johnson is a suspect in this case and charges have been submitted to the District Attorney's Office in relation to the stolen vehicle chop shop found at the Stardust location. My, 
What a story. <laughs> this is an update we're doing Absolutely. Yeah. as a request. All the way from Mount Potosi. <laughs> oh, it's a long way to drag it sure deer. <laughs> All right, well, recording and television star Phil Stacy performed at Rosemary Clark Middle School to benefit Helping Hands for Jesus. We caught up with Mr. Stacy right before his packed house performance. We are here at Rosemary Clark Middle School where Phil Stacy, the American Idol star, is holding a concert to benefit Helping Hands for Jesus. We're going to speak to Phil Stacy. Well, I uh, came to national attention when I was on American Idol season six. Uh, I left top five week. Uh, I signed a contract with Disney, put a country record out, and then I went, I kind of cross lateral switched record labels over to Sony Provident, which is a Christian uh, label. And uh, I've been touring and recording and performing ever since. I know, I, I heard that you were in the Navy. Yes, ma'am. I was in the Navy uh, from 2003 to 2007. Uh, I actually enlisted after September the 11th, but I got into what they call the delayed entry program, and I ended up, it took a while for me to ship off, but I was a singer for the Navy rock band, Pride, in Jacksonville, Florida, <laughs> and uh, it, it was a fun job. I, I think I pretty much had the coolest job in the military. Pretty sure I did. I know that your family is very religious too as well. Well, my dad is a pastor. Uh, both of my grandfathers are pastors as well. Um, actually, my father-in-law is a pastor. Everyone I've ever known with the word father in it, <laughs> pastor. There you go. You can imagine how, how hard it was growing up. No, it was fun. But, uh, but yeah, so ministry is kind of a natural part of, of uh, who I am, and, and it was kind of an easy transition into Christian music for me. Well, you seem very multi-talented. We got to hear some of your uh, sound check right here. I know you have a lot of people that are going to be performing with you as well. Yeah, there, there are, and I'm just meeting them for the first time tonight, but I know we have a children's choir. We have a, a, a lady trio, kind of duo singers, and a guitar player, um, and then a pastor who's here singing, and, and uh, I've gotten to know him pretty well tonight. Uh, seems like a wonderful, wonderful guy. So it's, it's really cool, you know, that's one of the benefits and perks of being on the road is you get to meet a lot of other people who, who love to do the same thing that you do and, and you just share a lot in common. Would you be my friend? And once again, you can go to Phil Stacy's website to get all of his music, including that release that's coming up in August. We want to thank Phil Stacy and Desiree Collins for Cup of Faith for inviting us here. This is Deanna O'Donnell at Rosemary Clark Middle School for News 46. So, do you watch American Idol? Uh, I used to when it was good. Did you <laughs> then, did you see Phil Stacy? I did. I saw Phil he's Stacy back when he was on. Yeah. See, back then they didn't allow them to play instruments, so I didn't mm. know he could play piano and guitar. And oh yeah, because you know the whole idea was it's all about their voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, now they're allowed to play instruments. So uh, uh, things certainly have changed. Things have really changed. The show's <laughs> become a phenomenon. I mean, oh, all yeah. the big stars uh, are on it. And... I, I I've moved on. I'm watching like The Voice now, which is oh, a great show. I love The Voice. <laughs> I, I watch them all, but I'm a singer, so. <laughs> I'm kind of prone. <laughs> Folks, coming up, the Prom Valley High School teens attend their prom. And an international film festival is right around the corner. We'll have all this and more right after the break. Please keep it here. News 46 is brought to you by... Southwest Medical Associates. Look for news about their latest healthcare center opening soon in your neighborhood. Southwest Medical Associates. Now that's powerful medicine. News 46 is also brought to you by Affiliated Chiropractic and Affiliated Physical Therapy. Come in for your free consultation. Call 775-727-8900. Our goal is to create the individual treatment plan that will restore your health and end pain. Welcome back to News 46. It's a night you talk about for the rest of your adulthood, the high school prom. Teens from all over prom gathered at the Sanders Family Winery on Kellogg last Saturday to enjoy a moment they will always remember. Uh, this is um, my class from Front Valley High School and some guests also besides that. And the kids had to earn their way here and they also got to invite one guest. Wonderful. James, tell me what it's like. You're all snazzed out here in your tuxedo. 
just another friendly day. <laughs> Are you guys really excited about tonight? Yeah, um, this is our first. This is my first time coming to prom, and um, and I love it. What a great night here at Sanders Family Winery. Yes, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. If you haven't seen it, you better come look at it. It's a castle. It's wonderful. What a fashion show. Wonderful. Thanks so much for speaking with us, and have a good night, guys. Filmmakers from all over the world have submitted their work, and the 6th annual High Desert Shorts International Film Festival is just days away. Tony Mendoza tells us all about this year's festivities. Yes, it's our 6th annual one still being held here in Pahrump. Again, the uh, Prompt Nugget Casino is going to be hosting that again for us, so I'm real grateful about that. This is so much fun. How many entries do we have so far? We have 40 entries. Um, the, we had about 189 submissions, so uh, this year it's, we were very, very strict on the quality of the film. So when people come out, they're going to see some real quality films, really quality. What's the criteria for a shorts? Uh, we do up to 40 minutes. Our genres that we're covering is comedy, uh, drama, horror, and sci-fi, and then we have an animation section. So. And are we doing the music videos this year? Or? No, no, no music videos this year. So. And so I know that your film, um, tell everybody a little bit about your film, but we're not going to be showing it this year. Right. Uh, my film's entitled Pitching Hope. I shot it last year after getting back from Afghanistan. We were going to attempt to show it here at this festival, um, but I, it was brought to my attention some of the requirements to submit to Sundance in addition to some uh, production uh, drawbacks or what have you, some things that we had to overcome. Uh, so instead, what we're going to do is for the public, since they support us, we'll have uh, sort of a, the making of and behind the scenes sort of thing. So it should be really entertaining. And so after you submit it to Sundance, We'll have a viewing here in Pahrump? Or? Pahrump is going to have their own individual private viewing because they've been so supportive of what I've done and everybody coming out and the community and different businesses. Absolutely. We're going to make sure we take care of Pahrump. Guaranteed. And when we say International Film Festival, we are really talking about an International Film Festival. There are submissions from all over the world. All over the world, every continent um, except for Antarctica. And we're actually going, I got an email last night that a filmmaker um, out of Australia will be in the States around that weekend and we'll, we'll be out here in attendance. So This is so much fun. People can come and watch all these films at The Nugget. We have a great screen and great sound going on there. So it's really something that you want to prepare for just to have a fantastic, I believe it's three days. How long is it? We have two days of filming, and then the third day on Sunday, the 29th, will be the award ceremony. And that in itself is just an opportunity to put on a, a, a finer suit and come out and just enjoy a little bit of culture. So, How can people find out more about the High Desert Shorts International Film Festival? Uh, real simply, just going to the website, uh, www.highdesertshortsiff.com. Dot com, and at that point, it'll show the times and the listings of the films and if they're family friendly or if they're a little bit more on the risky side. So, And we're going to have some of the actual filmmakers here. I know that we're going to have kind of a meet and greet. Absolutely. Saturday morning from 10 to 12, we're going to have a, a formal, I'm sorry, an informal uh, meet and greet with the filmmakers. The, the kids that were part of our youth camp that we conducted a few months ago, and we're trying to get an online guest to talk to us Skype, so uh, either a lawyer or a distribution company uh, out of Australia, not Australia, out of uh, Oregon. And then uh, we have filmmakers coming in um, from back east, uh, I believe Wisconsin, Los Angeles, I, I already said, the Australia, so all over people coming in to... Uh, so people can come meet these people, huh? Absolutely. Um, at, at 12 noon, right after our little brunch, uh, it's going to be a press conference, and we would like to invite and welcome everybody to come out and just to uh, shake hands and, and talk to these filmmakers. Everybody's really uh, diplomatic and uh, very open to talk to the public. And tell everybody the dates of the High Desert Shorts International Film Festival. The opening, opening ceremony starts uh, Friday, May 27th. Uh, the doors will open at 5.30. The ceremony starts at 6 p.m. And then we begin our filming, uh, watching our films at that point. And Saturday, everything jumps off right around, I believe, 1 p.m. And then Sunday, our award ceremony at 6. The Nye County Commissioners met on Monday to review their final budget. Butch Baraski spoke with us about the actions being taken to reduce excessive spending. Well, I think it came out quite well, and first let me say it's, it's my pleasure to, uh, to have the boss here finally from <laughs> my favorite uh, TV station, Channel 41, 46 in, in Pahrump. Uh, I think Pam Webster put together a fantastic package for us. 
it made it quite easy for us to do and 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 we're not going to have to go out and lay a whole bunch of people off so that we'll have jobs secured and and to me uh, i don't think we could have got a better package to work with a couple key points that came out one was a work fur furlough for the employees of nye county and the second one was a uh, the nye county sheriff actually came across with a big huge cut in his department itself can you expand on those two yes i i think everybody stood up to plate especially the sheriff the sheriff vol voluntarily came forward with about a half million dollars worth of savings I think all of the all of the associations stepped up and did their part by uh, giving up a little something so that we could pass this budget the way it is right now. Okay, and the uh, the work furlough, how will that work out with the staff? Well, uh, I believe staff's going to look at possibly having that it, as many uh, facilities as we can do it all on one day a month where we could shut the buildings down. Now, if the courts might be an exception, obviously the sheriff is a separate operation. Uh, but as far as the basic essential services, we should be able to shut everything down one day a month and try to get a set date. And that will save money, too, by heating, air conditioning, not having lights on and so on, and building maintenance. So uh, that was discussed in there, and Pam's going to look at that to try to make that you know, a, a set day every month as much as possible. Brokering your own fuel, how will that uh, play out, do you think, in the community itself? Do you think you can buy it cheap enough to where you can turn around and sell it or, or use it for yourselves without having to incur the taxes and costs that are associated with it, or will those still come along with it, the taxes? Well, hopefully when this new Maverick station comes in, maybe we can work with them. Uh, and and uh, they're notorious for um, uh, uh, cutting costs and actually supplying U.S. oil based gas, which means they're the only one in the system, and I hope we can work with them on that. Uh, and we do supply fuel for not just the county, but the town and other government agencies, the fire department, and we're pretty much the fuel location for all the agencies within the area. So it's, it's just not county. So the budget you feel is pretty well uh, balanced so that you guys will be able to operate well without really hurting the county itself? Right. I believe we got a, a good budget balanced and then hopefully uh, economy picks up a little more. The town board is obviously looking at bringing in some, um, some projects for the fairgrounds property and um, maybe we can get some more jobs in here and that'll boost our revenue streams and uh, we won't have to worry about uh, unhidden circumstances that may come up in any budget. But right now I think Pam's done a fantastic job like she always does. And I think that's a great budget to work with. Thank you. Some other methods of reduction are a $1.3 million salary reduction, a savings of $223,000 by removing unfilled positions, and much more. The result of these reductions is a $5.1 million savings in the general fund. Wow, Quite a bit. that is a chunk of change. They can send that $5.1 million to Rick Vale, care of KPVM <laughs> Television. <laughs> I don't think they have it, Rick. That's oh, the point. Oh, man. It's okay. It's time to introduce you to Narvel Hecathorn. I hope I pronounced your name right. She is our sixth contestant for the Miss Senior Golden Years pageant, which is to be held on June 4th at the Saddle West. Narvel Hecathorn. My platform is American Cancer Society, the Look Good, Feel Better program, which is specifically geared for women, children, and men going through cancer treatment. It is my hope to bring that program to the Pahrump area in that I don't believe American Cancer has any representation other than um, the hospice program that is now running here in, in Pahrump. However, I have identified many of the needs of, of women, children, and men in this community, and my platform will be to bring the Look Good, Feel Better program into the community. Thank you, and I hope you'll join us on June 4th at Saddle West. We had a a little bit of wind out there today, in case you all didn't notice. And, and clouds. <laughs> and lots of clouds. And guess what, guys? You kick your umbrellas out. We might have some rain actually really? coming up. Yeah, the next tonight, maybe tomorrow, might see some rain. Uh, don't go anywhere. We got your seven day forecast coming up for you right after this break. News 46 weather is brought to you by your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. For more information, you can visit their website at nevadadairycouncil.org. Hey folks, welcome back to News 46. I'm Rick Vale with your weather. I'm going to get out of the screen right here just so you can see a minute. 
The high wind warning is in effect. It will remain in effect through 11 p.m. tonight. Winds are coming out of the southwest 20 to 30 miles per hour, but we're expecting gusts in excess of 45 miles per hour. They'll be strongest in the afternoon through the early evening. Please be sure to be careful if you're out there driving. Winds like this can push high profile vehicles all over the roadway. Now looking at today, we got cloudy skies out there, high of 71 degrees. Winds out of the south southwest 18 miles per hour. Gusts upwards of 34 miles per hour. Now our pressure is rising 29.71. The UV index 8, very high for us. Sunrise will be at 5.36 a.m. and our record has 102 degrees back in 2009. Looking at tonight, it's going to be cloudy for us still. we got about a 20% chance of rain out there, so keep that in mind. A low of 54 degrees. Winds out of the southwest at 15 miles per hour with gusts upwards of 38 miles per hour. Now, as I said before, we get the high wind advisory, which means we could see winds as high as 45 to 50 miles per hour. Sunset will be at 745 p.m. and our record low is 62 degrees back in 1962. Looking at tomorrow, partly cloudy for us, a high of 70, a low of 54. Winds out of the west, 16 miles per hour with gusts up to 36 miles per hour. Very windy for us. The UV index is 7, which is kind of high for us, but not as high as we've been having over the last week or so. Sun sunrise tomorrow is at 536 a.m. Looking at our seven day forecast, 20% chance of rain expected, of course. And Thursday, we got gusty winds, 22 miles per hour. Winds expected, a high 78 and a low 52. Friday, looking at gusty again, 25 with a high 79, a low 55. Saturday, a 20% chance of rain is expected with gusts up to 31 miles per hour. We're going to have a high of 81 that day and a low of 52. Sunday, finishing off our weekend, gusts up to 39 miles per hour, a high of 76, a low of 51. Monday, the clouds aren't going anywhere for us with gusts up to 37 miles per hour, a high of 78 and a low of 55. Finishing off our 7-day forecast next Tuesday, looking at 23 mile per hour gusts with a high of 91 and a low of 60. And our worst weather in the nation today is Kitty Hawk, North Carolina for strong thunderstorms. First, I thought it was like Griffin or something based on that graphic. So and do, you, do you think that's going to be a new record low I then? Was yeah, I was just going to say that. It it's, looks like we had a rec we're going to have a record setting evening tonight. So we'll let, wow. I'll let you know by tomorrow if the temperature does get that low, it'll be a, the lowest we we've ever had. we were here to see it, There folks. you go. Mark your calendars. That's you were there. Right. All right, well, we have free tickets to give away. Yay! This is for our 5 p.m. newscast only, however. Boo. Uh, boo. We're giving away two tickets to this Sunday's Miss Senior Nye County Showcase at the Prump Nugget. The tickets will go to the first caller to, it's local area code 775. The phone number is 513-2743. Again, that's 513-2743. And again, this is for our 5 p.m. newscast viewers only. The Nye County Sheriff's Office Reserve Deputy Academy is holding an open house tomorrow night at the Board of County Commissioners Chambers in the Calvada Eye. For those interested in becoming a Nye County Sheriff's Officer Reserve Deputy, it will be held from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. Conservative leaders will join together this upcoming Thursday, May 19th, for a historic defeat Barack Obama Radiothon modeled after the telethons hosted by Jerry Lewis. This program will be broadcast nationwide on KDON 720 AM. It's pretty popular. That's KDWN 720 AM. The lineup as of today is as follows, and I'll let Rick read all these names. It's pretty long. <laughs> Congresswoman Michelle Bachman, former Congressman J.D. Hayworth, Congressman Tom McClintlock, conservative activist Phyllis Schlafly, I'm sure I messed that one up, Sheriff John Arpaio, conservative king of new media and author Andrew Breitbart, 2008 Libertarian presidential candidate Wayne Allen Root, Republican presidential candidate Gary Johnson, Jason Hoyt of Tea Party Patriots Radio, Catherine Jean Lopez of National Review, Darla DeWald of Patriot Action Network, conservative blogger Robert Stacy McCain, Canada Free Press editor Judy McLeod, and conservative Twitter leader Melissa Clothier, conservative author Kevin Jackson, John Hawkins of Right Wing News, and Noel Shepard of Newsbusters.org. Good job. That's a lot of people against Barack Obama. It's a very big party <laughs> happening next wow. week. Wow. All right. Well, the Radiothon will be hosted by Melanie Morgan, Lloyd, Marcus, and Amy Kramer. For more information about this Radiothon, you can visit kdon.com. And, folks, that does it for this edition of News 46. I'm Rick Vale. I'm Rhonda Van Winkle. From everyone up here in the Hill KPVM, we wish you a safe evening. We'll see you here again tomorrow night. Until then, good night, Brump. Good night. Mm -hmm.